Shawshank was a terrible place until that day in 1947, when a man named Andy Dufresne entered the prison walls. I had already been here for many years before Andy showed up. I was sent here for murdering my wife and accidentally killing two neighbors in the process. Andy was also sent here for murder. He was accused of stabbing his wife and her lover, a golf pro named Glenn Quinton. I'm known around the prison as the guy who can get you anything. One day Andy came to me asking for a rock hammer. Hesitantly, I got it for him. Not long after, Andy approached me again, this time asking for a large poster of Big J. I told him I would get it to him as soon as possible. Andy and I had become friends over the years, and one day we were both assigned to a work crew tarring the roof of a license plate factory. Andy overheard one of the guards, Byron Hadley, talking about inheriting a large amount of cash. Andy interrupted the guard's conversation and, being an ex-banker, had some great advice on how Hadley could keep all of the money tax-free. As a reward, Andy got us all some coke and was assigned a new prison librarian. He was also protected from the sisters, and he never got assigned a cellmate. Andy also started to help out some guards with their taxes and even helped Warden Norton launder some money. One day, a new inmate, Tommy Williams, arrived at Shawshank. He wanted to turn his life around and get a high school diploma so he could return home a changed man. Andy decided to help him out. After learning why Andy was sent to Shawshank, Tommy remembered an old cellmate, Elwood Blatch. Blatch told Tommy that he had killed a golf pro and some lady. Also, that the lady was married to some hotshot banker. As soon as Andy heard that, he told the warden and asked for a release. Not wanting to lose Andy, since he was getting him lots of money, Warden Norton refused. Not enough evidence to take this to court. You gotta let me try! Why are you being so obtuse? I'm not being obtuse! Now you're just being acute. Get him out of my office! No, you gotta be kidding me! No! Just let me try! Get him out! Please! Andy was put into solitary confinement, and Tommy was transferred to another prison. Weeks later, when Andy was released from solitary confinement, he told me all about a secret bank account he had set up. He had been sending money there for years. He was planning to take it all to Mexico and assume the name Peter Stevens. He wanted to go to a town called Zehuataneo and become the proprietor of a hotel. He asked me to go with him. He told me that if I ever got out of Shawshank, to look for a black volcanic rock. It would be by a stone wall in a field in Buxton. Under the rock, there would be something for me. I didn't think Andy would ever try to escape. One morning, some guards found Andy's cell empty. As soon as the warden found out, he was furious. He threw all of Andy's belongings on the ground and ripped off the poster of Big J. When the poster came down, it revealed a hole in the concrete wall. I guess Andy had used a rock hammer to dig through the weak concrete. Then he must have broke through one of the sewage pipes behind the wall and crawled through it all the way to the drainage ditch outside the prison walls. The search of the ditches revealed nothing but an old pair of prison clothes. I didn't hear anything from Andy after his escape, but I did receive a blank postcard from a border town in Texas. There was nothing written on it, but I knew that Peter Stevens had made it to Zewatineo. Several years later, I was released from Shawshank Prison. I was on parole living in a hotel in Maine, not far from Shawshank. The outside world was a much different place than I remember it being. I got a job as a bag boy at a local grocery store. Every break I had, I would search for that black rock. After weeks of searching, I finally found it. Underneath was an envelope addressed to me, and it was $201 and an invitation to join Andy in Mexico. That is when I decided to abandon my parole and make my way to Mexico. I picture Andy sitting on the beach enjoying a nice placenta sandwich.
<laughs> we need to see over here. There is not enough evidence to be. Yeah, let me try okay, okay, one more. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Elsie. Hey, Elsie. Hi, Elsie. Hey. How's it going, Pooch? Let's go, bud. Nice. That's 15. That's 16. Here we go, Rico. 17. He's got 50 in a row so far. This is quite the achievement. Here you go, Rico. You ready? Oh. Rico! <laughs> Stop licking the door! <laughs> He did it. Ah. Friggin' no, no. Don't shoot, dude. Don't me. shoot us. We're nice. Nickname Peter Stevens. MB the prop. <laughs> What's up? You boy? suck at reading. Proprietor. Proprietor. <laughs> I zoomed it all the way to your eyeball. Sticks my track to sexy. <laughs> oh my gosh! And now it's time for silly songs with Jerry. The water buffalo song. But uh, we uh, all live in a water buffalo. A water buffalo. A water buffalo. It's supposed to be working. Oh wait, it's yellow submarine. What? I'm still filming. Dude, no, just we can keep, cut just it out, Rico. Filming. We can always have. It's always. Good <laughs> <laughs> that can be an outtake. <laughs> <laughs>